So let's talk about um, our first uh, machine learning model, and which you may have already learned from your statistic class, uh, which is called simple uh, linear regression model. So I think it's called simple linear regression model because we assume that those two variables, um, dependent and also independent variables, follow a linear regression, a linear relationship. Okay, uh, so the model is very simple. So the model um, X and also Y, so Y is uh, independent variable and also Y is dependent variable. And here, the parameters, we do have two parameters, uh, alpha and also beta. Okay, so alpha and beta, those are the two parameters. So those two parameters determine your model. And X and also Y are the two variables. Uh, so, for example, here, if we want to predict the price based on the area, okay, if we want to predict the price based on the area, so uh, what we can do is that, so for example, we have a lot of tables, so those are the price, those are the area, okay? So we know the price for some record, and we know the area for some uh, house, so we know the price of the house, we know the area of the house, uh, so we put that one onto a chart, uh, not, a <coughs> yeah, just visualize the data, okay, so that is the price and not that is area. And it is a, a simple linear uh, regression model, so the line will be a straight line, so that is our predict model, and that model is controlled by those two parameters, alpha and also beta. So if you still remember that alpha is uh, is a value of the intercept, and the beta is talking about beta is talking about the slope. Okay, so the beta is is the slope of this a straight line. So once you have alpha and also beta, you will have this line. And next, if I say I have a I have a house that we know the area. And we want to predict the price. So for example, if a house price area is like this, you just bring that one to the model, and you can check, okay, so the corresponding price. Okay, so that idea that behind a simple linear regression models. And we do have errors. So because this is supervised learning model, because we know the price for some records, and we bring those records to train the model. So we know the right answer and also we know the wrong answers. So for example, this single point is a point that we brought to the to training the model. And uh, that the real price is this. However, if we use a model, predict price will be like this. Okay, so now we have those ones. So that is what we call the error. Okay, so that is what we call errors. Uh, so the, the error is a real price minus the predict price. So the errors can be positive, the errors can also be negative. Okay, so let's put that on the, uh, on the nice chart. Um, so the idea, the objective of the model is that we are trying to find out the alpha and the beta. So now we have those area and also price, so those are the training data. We're trying to find out alpha and beta that can minimize the errors. Okay, so that can minimize the errors. So in this case, the uh, alpha is the intercept and also beta is the slope. So we're trying to find out a straight line that can pass through those points in another way, which can minimize the errors. Okay, so ideally that we are trying to find out this line because it's a linear relationship, linear regression model. So we are trying to find a straight line and to minimize those errors. And this straight line is controlled by two parameters. The first one is this one intercept or alpha. The second one is a slope, which is a beta. Okay, so that is a simple linear regression model. So X and Y, um, those will be the point, will be a sample point that we brought to training the model. And also alpha and beta will be the parameters of the model. And we want 
to find out the best parameter, so the best and alpha and beta that can minimize the error. <clears throat> okay, um, so how can we find out the alpha and the beta to minimize the errors? Uh, so if you recall from your statistics, I, I believe that the method that the professor introduced is called the ordinary least squares. Or uh, in another way, it's called OLS. So OLS is one approach that can find out the best parameter, the best alpha and beta, which can which will produce the, the minimal errors. Okay, so OLS is a one approach. So one of those approach that can find out alpha and beta that can minimize errors. And to be more specific, it can minimize the sum of the squared errors. The sum of the squared error. Because sometimes the error can be positive and sometimes the error can be negative. So if you can minimize the sum of the squared errors, then that will be a very great model. Okay, uh, so let's review that what the OLS uh, is doing. So in OLS, ordinary least squares, you can just follow the, the formulas to find out the alpha and beta. So for any given data, the alpha and the beta will equal to those values. So the beta will be the correlation between x and y times the standard deviation of y and subtract and divide by the standard deviation of x. Okay, so correlation standard deviation. So for any given x and y, for any given variables, you just calculate correlation standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y, and you will have the beta. So that is the best beta. And for alpha, you just use the mean of the y minus uh, the beta that you calculated here times the mean of the x. And that will give you the best alpha. So for any given data, you just calculate those two. And we also want to measure the performance of that model. So what we also want to measure the performance of the model. So the way that we measure the performance of the model is called R square. Okay, so R square can tell you that to what extent that the model can explain the variation of the uh, dependent variable. Okay, uh, that is captured. So the variation in the dependent variables can be captured by the model. So R square is a value between zero and one. So if it is one, it is great. So it captures the entire variation. It, it, if it is zero, that means it's, it is terrible. So it means that uh, it does nothing, explain nothing of the data. And here is a way that we can calculate the R squared. So R squared by using OLS is calculated like this. So first, we have the sum of the squared errors. And then we have a sum of the squared each single y minus the mean of the y. And we get a ratio, and we use a 1 divide to subtract the ratio, and we have R squared. Okay, so that is R squared when we calculate when we are using OLS. The higher the better. Okay, the higher the better. Um, and also in simple linear regression models, the R squared also equals the squared correlation between x and y. Okay, so in simple linear regression models, R squared also equals to the squared um, correlation between x and y. So R squared is a, is a result between 0 and also 1. It's a value between 0 and 1. So if, uh, say if your, your data is like this, okay, uh, if your model is something like this, and then your model will have very great, very high R squared. Uh, if your model doesn't fit with the data, so like this, then this model will have very low R squared. 